All right, everybody. Thank you for coming uh, and watching. Actually, uh, I want to introduce Fred Yokel, who's been a really long term client of ours. Uh, and uh, we have some of his artwork in our office. I have some in my office. And uh, Fred is a local artist. Uh, and I wanted to highlight some of the different businesses within our clientele. Uh, so we're going to start here with Fred and kind of ask him some questions and just go through some of the pieces that he's done. Uh, we'll give you some of the contact details if you decide that that's something you'd like to do. Uh, you know, here at Retirement Cap Strategies, we feel like these people are supporting us and we'd like to support them. And that's what this is about. So uh, we'll, we'll probably do a few of these. But so, Fred, uh, thank you for coming today. Hi, thanks for yeah. having me. <laughs> Thanks for the questions. Uh, yeah, I, so I just, you know, obviously, you know, we've been talking back and forth, you know, on your finances for a really long time and yeah. uh, not had as much time to talk about your art. We have had these, you know, art shows uh, before the, the COVID happened. We had these different shows uh, in our office. And uh, so I met Fred there, uh, you know, in that environment. Ha has the pandemic really slowed down? some of that because i know we can't do the art shows you know or haven't um yeah has, how's yeah, that been in effect? yeah that has been i mean last march that's when every all the galleries basically closed yeah so as a starving artist anyway <laughs> yeah it made it a little more difficult to sell things it had to go more uh um i don't know virtual and uh personalized you yeah. know a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing yeah. Um, until they reopen. Galleries don't get a lot of traffic anyway. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, street traffic and clients that are repeat customers that show up once in a while. Yeah. So they, they basically stopped having uh, receptions, which is the a good thing for artists because they get a lot of people all at once. And that yeah. stopped. And how and about like shows? Are there different kinds of, I, I think I've been to every fruit and vegetable show. Right. Our, you know. We have uh, in the artist community, a lot of uh, people look at them as art and wine festivals. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, and I participate in um, one in particular in Palo Alto, which is only clay and glass. There's no wine, although I could probably bring some, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, that one's specific to clay and glass artists only, oh, okay. which is kind of nice. And it's a pretty high quality show. It's usually in July, yeah. but that's been delayed also. Okay. And we did have it this year in uh, just last month in August. Okay. Oh, so, so it's some, somewhat picking up again. Yeah. You know, now yeah. The and there's more of them showing up now. Good, good. Life is maybe getting back to normal a little sort bit. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I actually had one question, uh, you know, in your background, when I was reading up on you here, getting ready for this, you know, you, you went to San Jose State, which is where I went. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but then you worked for some pottery houses before you went off to the California yeah. Institute of uh, Art, correct? Right. What did you do at the pottery house? I'm just curious, uh, you know, what well, type of when I was at San Jose State, I, I took ceramics. That was my yep. concentration. Yeah. And um I was fortunate to have a really good program in my high school, which got me started anyway. Oh, great. Um, and I was mostly a potter then. I was interested in um, utilitarian wear. And I happened upon this job with one of my best friends um, that was doing production pottery, which means we made, um, I made personally, uh, mugs, uh, okay. beer steins. This oh, is wow. the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, wine goblets, wine decanters, planters, bowls, all kinds of stuff like that by yeah. the thousands. Wow. I, I'd make hundreds a day. Oh my gosh, really? And that was, uh, that was my main income at the time, you right. know, in college um, for a couple of summers anyway. And um, I got burned out on it because making hundreds of thousands of pieces all the time, every day, in and out gets to be a grind. Uh, um, it's a great thing to do. You become very well versed at making a particular piece and knowing how to do it yeah. accurately. Um, but I was more interested in uh, single pieces, one of a kind pieces. I like to concentrate on one thing and, and put in a lot of detail in it. So I kind of let that slide. I haven't stopped doing it. I still do it, but I don't yeah. do it at those quantities anymore. Yeah. I make well, singular that's... pieces mostly. That's incredible. Yeah, you're on an assembly line, essentially. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Human assembly line. 
So then how did you transition? Because you're basically your own business now uh, to, for all intents and purposes. Yeah, well, the they, business. the people I was working for, decided they didn't want to do it anymore. Oh, okay. That helped. <laughs> so it, was, uh, it was like, we, here, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I was thinking that as you were talking that that type of activity might not be happening here in the Valley as much because they it, can. It does. Go. And it does as still a matter of fact, the show in Palo Alto has a lot of it. Oh, okay. A lot of production work. So it's really nice work. Very refined yeah. now, you know. Good. Good. In, in the 70s, it was a little more uh, looser and cruder, but it was still nice. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that started it. And then uh, later on, in another class I was taking, I was going to a community college, West Valley here. Okay. And uh, that's where I really got interested in figurative and one of a kind pieces. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, good. I, I actually um, went ahead and made a little, uh, uh, grabbed some pictures off of, yeah. Uh, there's a studio uh, shops uh, website, which we'll put the link here, you know, in the email when we send out this video uh, and put it at the bottom of the video too. So people can see there's some unbelievable pictures in there of some of your art. I just kind of had some questions. I happen to be a huge fan of what I call 3D art, you know, just statues yeah. of all types. So yeah. uh, I like paintings a lot also, yeah. but uh, 3D art's the thing that really interests me uh, the most, but and so I, let me share my screen. And so we'll go up in the corner of the picture here, so to speak, and then just kind of tell me about some of these pieces because I actually have, which is good. Yeah, this, this is more of a, this is more of this figurative sculpture kind of thing that I'm doing now. I, yeah. I kind of abstract a human form. It's not very uh, accurate to anatomy. Right. And I, I have them doing something usually that is found uh, in my twisted brain. <laughs> kind of, uh, action that they're they've achieved or they're doing they're caught in the middle of it's kind of like photographs only in a 3d form oh okay a stop uh, some kind of motion that's captured yeah i've got three of them here i'll just show them quickly and we can sure. i'll ask you some about it too but uh, they also have names which I, that's kind of interesting to me because this one's called about this high yeah. uh and then you know uh, we have one that looks a lot like this in our office actually right. Yeah. And over and over here, and then this last one, pieces of cake. So what's the piece of cake? Uh, they're all three letter names, uh, three word yeah. names. That one of the things that I was really trying to do with a lot of the pieces is make three words okay. that would explain what was going on. Yeah. Um, I, I like to keep it at three because it was like the ability to do a full sentence with three words. Yeah. But uh, they're suggestive, but they don't tell the whole story so that yeah. the viewer can look at it and go, what is he doing? Which is always fun. And yeah. sometimes I get people saying, that's exactly what my dad said, you know, you know, uh, talk to the hand or, uh, oh yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I've tried right. to reduce those into three words. Just, that's just a challenge that I have for myself. Yeah. This guy, piece of cake happens to be trying to get away from this environment that he's in. And he thinks it's real easy to escape. Got it. So it's a piece Got of it. cake to get out. <laughs> he's caught in these, uh, weird organic forms that happen to mimic his uh, pattern on his uh, body. Oh, yeah. See, now that, that's that's the part I really love about art. There's all these little, yeah. you know, pieces. I have kind of a twisted sense of humor, so a lot of them I do very uh, silly. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's really interesting. Now, when you, when you make these pieces, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we came out to Fred's house already and had an interview, uh, Lisa from her office went out and asked. And so you, you create these out of a, a coil, a thick coil, essentially. Uh, a coil. Yeah, it's basically yeah. a coil based process, um, which is real, the ancient way of making pieces. You start at the bottom and you work your way up. Yeah. And you kind of form it as you go. And uh, it's, uh, clay is time consuming anyway. Yeah. Um, and that process is very demanding because you have to figure out what you're going to do with that form ahead of time because as you work on it, you can't do the whole thing all at once because clay's soft. Yeah. And if you try to do that, a real tall piece, for example, it would start sagging and fall over. Oh, I see. So you have to let the bottom section stiffen up as you go okay. along. Okay. So that means it is, it's stuck. It's, it's decided. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to go with that flow sometimes and sometimes it doesn't work quite well so you have some idea though of what yes. what you want to do yeah. you know, 
kind of before I have you drawings uh, yeah. a lot of times ahead of time yeah. that I've done. And I say, oh, I'm going to make this piece. Most of the time, they don't turn out exactly like the drawing, okay. which is a real easy thing to uh, it's hard to follow from 2D to 3D. Yeah, OK. And then these all have a very unique uh, look, glaze, uh, like I'll call it for yeah, surface. lack of better word. Yeah, surface. And uh, describe that. I mean, because there's not they're not typical to me. They're, they're very interesting. They're um, one of the things, especially about my figurative work, uh, I glazes, per se, uh, are usually shiny. Right. A lot of them. And I've always said, well, humans don't walk around with shiny clothes unless it's the 70s and you're wearing patent leather yeah so i like matte finishes got it non-shiny so i use something called underglaze which is more clay than glaze i guess i would say and more pigment and it it fires on to the clay in a more matte look okay the other thing i do is i scrape the clay when i finish my pieces i scrape them with a a metal rib, which makes it look like uh, stone to me, oh, okay. granite. Got it. And that's that's something else that has always influenced me is nature. Yeah. Uh, stone, um, wood, um, erosion, rust, that kind of stuff. I like all of that surface, uh, natural surface look. So yeah. I try to make it look a little bit like stone, and then I color it, which is not like stone too much. Yeah. Although I have some that look like uh, rock. Yeah. Uh, so it's a drier look. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's my next piece here that I, I brought up that, uh, yeah, out of the gallery. Go. Perfect example of the combination of stone and wood. That yeah, is all clay. It's all clay. That's crazy. It's just a lot of carving. I, I make a, the basic shape of that. And then I go back and spend hours carving what I think looks like wood. Yeah. And I, and what I think looks like stacked, uh, field stones or some kind of cobblestone or something. Yeah, because I go back and color it. it that the, de the depth in the stack stones too are really interesting to me. I mean, because that's a solid piece. It's, but right. It looks like a bunch of piece stones glued together right. or right. stacked on top of each other. It's amazing. Yeah, I have one piece where uh, a couple of the stones I've pulled out and made it look like they're actually removed. Oh, um, I see. It's basically the piece is hollow. The walls are uh, three eighths of an inch thick, maybe. Okay. And that guy's about a foot tall, maybe. Yeah. And then I just go back with an exacto knife and a needle and carve those lines back in. And I try to get them pretty deep because I want to make them look like they're actually separate pieces. I was going to ask how you got because some of these lines in the wood here are really deep. Uh, yeah, they are. That, I that does... try to go pretty deep to make that... it look like real old weather. Yeah. Now. How... How often do you mess up and have to like, I mean, because you could get going down the path and there's right. no return, I would think at some point. Always. Um, yeah. <laughs> does that just become a different piece than you uh, thought or does happens, it get trash? Yeah, that happens a lot. I'll, yeah. I'll do something or the, the good thing about clay is as long as it has moisture in it, ah. it can be brought back to life. Got it. I can cut a piece off and go, I don't like that, you know, cut his nose off, spite his face, whatever. Yeah. And or his complete head. If I don't like the angle, I can cut it off and turn it in another direction. Oh, okay, that's Add good. Add a piece of pie in there and make it angled. Right, right. I can do a lot uh, okay. because of my experience. I've got over fifty years doing wow. clay. Yeah. Um, I kind of know the limits. Okay. I've learned. That's, them. Yeah, that, that sounds that's fascinating. Yeah, it's like anything. You know, you put your ten thousand hours in. <laughs> you get, you get, yeah, I'm still learning. I, I never stop learning. It's always there's always something new. Yeah, I would and think so. I mean, great. this this wood is just it's fascinating to me. It's yeah, just it's incredible. become a thing lately for me that I, I do it a lot lately. I have a piece oh. right there. I don't know. Yeah, the, the next one I have is kind of what you mentioned also, which is kind of building on nature. This yeah. rust color. Rust. How rust. do you I love get, rust? Old how you, iron. How do you get the rust? The rust is a combination of texture that I. I uh, apply to the the scraped clay. I, I, I kind of smooth it all out at first, yeah. and then I scrape it, and that leaves little holes in it because there's um, matter in the clay that's rough. Yeah, and then I go back and I blob on clay and texture it with either cloth or my fingers, um, and 
maybe even dry clay to make it look like dried, crusty ah. surface. And then the key is coloring it to make it look like rust, which yeah. I'm still perfecting that. I'm close on some of them. It looks, it looks pretty good, but you know, I have what I have in my head that I want to emulate and it, it doesn't always match, but it's close. Yeah. I really like that piece because of the combination and it's an abstracted rhino, you know, no rhino yeah. looks like that anyway. Yeah. It's kind of like he's got armor on. It does. That's really incredible. Actually. It's got the combination with the wood and, and what have you too. I, I know when Lisa and Chris came out to visit you there at your house, which is where you kind of have your studio, yeah. she said you had a rusty nail uh, that was clay, but it looked yeah exactly like a rusty nail it was yeah. really amazing i have a, a, a um railroad spike that i'm oh yeah at. yeah it's all clay yeah that's cool it's kind of weird to make a spike but oh it's it's yeah but that's where the rest would come in too and so the, yeah. the last pieces i have i have four of the animals which i really like there's these yeah. are my favorites too uh and you've had some of these at our show I, there's a camel yeah. Uh, one and a cat or called stripes here yeah. um, and uh, the lion mm -hmm. uh, and you've got lots of these different ones i just choose of them. these yep. and then a couple of giraffe buddies and so they all have that similar kind of roundy yeah. shape and so tell yes. me about some of these years ago um i i made a, a sphere i like spheres that's another thing about clay i always say this it's from the earth yeah the earth is round maybe right. that's why i like round things and i like clay so right. i'll go with it uh yeah. so i made these this sphere and i i did a couple of abstract things on it and it ended up looking like a really abstracted bird and i thought well that's kind of cool i think i'll make some real animals that are round right. and the humor in me says you know this is biologically crazy an af uh, uh, a giraffe like that with little tiny short stubby <laughs> legs yeah cartoon very cartoony Right. But I, I got obsessed with it and I'm trying to make basically a complete alphabet or more any animal that I can come up with in as a sphere. Okay. And so they have shorter necks sometimes. Uh, I've done raccoons, beavers, you name it. I've yeah. done a shark, um, oh. everything, anything that I can come up with. And uh, as a matter of fact, a... Um, uh, an entity, I don't know what they were. They came out with animated CG round animals and it's called, um, if animals, if animals were round. Oh, if there you, you go. That, yeah. You'll see exactly my kind of humor in, in, uh, uh, uh it, it follows very close. They're all round animals. And it's hilarious. Yeah. You've got to check it out. <laughs> I will. I, I would think that these uh, would be popular at your shows too. Uh, they are, they are. People like and they're, all, they're only about the size of a baseball. They're yeah. small. Right. I put uh, beads of clay in them so they're rattles also. I have a turtle. Oh, here. okay. That, so you can hear them. Oh, interesting. And uh, I'm, uh, there's a story behind this, the number of beads that are in there. There's oh, either is that there's either 13 beads or 22 beads because that's the uh, birth dates of my kids. <laughs> the oh. 13th and the 22nd. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. <laughs> Little private things in there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All those pieces that are going out there and such. Yeah, so yeah exactly. How, how would people uh, buy these pieces? I mean, what's the, what's the well, mechanism that you have for, for kind of merchandise? Um, as, as with most artists, um, uh, well, no, I guess there's different venues. I do the show in Palo Alto, but that's the only show I do. Yeah. So once a year, I'll, I'll do that show and I'll be at that um, yeah. normally. Um, otherwise, it's galleries and contacting me directly. Okay, good. And uh, the gallery is a good place to go see the work. Yeah. Um, my home studio isn't the best place to see work. I'm not right. really set up with a gallery or anything here, but right. I'll talk to people. Yeah. I take... Um, you know, uh, I'll always negotiate with people on how we can set up if yeah. they want to see something. I'll bring it to their house even if they want, if they're local. Okay, yeah. That's and send awesome. pictures. So I, I will do that. But like I said, I have a gallery in Burlingame and one in Lafayette right now that both have my work. And uh, I guess yeah. we can link that somehow if you want. 
We, I will. Yeah, exactly. Those pictures came off of, uh, yeah, and, yeah and they're, the they're excellent pictures. Uh, and the there's website. another video that you did that I'll probably put a link on this video also, uh, that I thought was really well done. Cool, so, but, but this is great. I, I really appreciate uh, the chance to learn more about, you know, what you do and how it works. And, you know, uh, it's, it's for somebody like me, I don't have a tremendous amount of artistic talent. You know, <laughs> my grandmother started painting, you know, there's different things that happened, yeah. uh, but. Well, it's nice that you appreciate it. And that's, yeah, you know, that counts and that helps uh, the artists out there, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, def, I believe it just the, the less you can do it, <laughs> the more yeah. you think it's just magic. <laughs> I want to do it all. I like yeah. to paint too and uh, yeah. draw all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, that's amazing. I'll do anything. I mean, you must have really unbelievable control on your small motor skills and such to be able to do all of these things. Actually, I mean, I look at some of the like the wood and, you know, yeah. uh, that that part I just don't have either. So it's I always find that fascinating when people anybody can, can do it. Yeah, it takes practice yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, like yeah. say, put in the ten thousand hours. So yeah. All right, Fred. Uh, well, thank you very much, and yeah, I want to thank you for you know you know agreeing to do this, and I'm so happy we'll we'll get this uh, set up, and uh, look forward to continuing to talk to you about it. Yep.